Transmissions jammed. Proximity coverage only. Hey guys, Jacob here. This is going to be a quick video on the title update 10.1 patch notes. I'm not going to cover every single thing because I don't want to make this an extremely long video, uh, but I will be talking about a few things that I was aware of and a few things I was not aware of. For one, it's going to be the audio and subtitles. I didn't realize they were going to fix this, which is really nice, which is the uh, basically they added this for the Keener Legacy Collectibles. For weapons, they changed the maximum rifle ammo capacity from 280 to 420. For gear, they changed the shield health bonus increase from 10% to 50% on the forge holster. For gear sets, for bulwark, they changed the three-piece gear set bonus from 3% to 1% and added 50% shield health. The loot, they increase uh, minimum item power and chances for higher powder items for uh, several difficulties, resulting in higher average rolls overall. Slight increase on challenging, bigger increase on heroic and legendary, which is really nice because I'm tired of running heroics and getting still stat rolls that are pretty low compared to some of the things I've picked up in, you know, legendary missions obviously gets higher, um, but I would still expect to pick up some pretty decent gear in heroics and I still get pretty bad gear in there. Sealed caches increase power of items from field proficiency in dark zone caches to be on par with heroic tier loot up from challenging. Increased power of items from claim caches to be on par with legendary tier loot up from Heroic. I did not know this. Increased of item power on legendary tier loot also affects all season caches. Uh, this is the one thing a few people I've heard talking about. They moved the general pool exotic from missions final bosses loot to mission completion rewards. Uh, which that means an exotic that drops as loot from a final boss in a mission will either be the exotic specific to the mission, the bighorn of legendary missions, or an exotic from the current target loot pool, but a, not a random different exotic. These extra random exotics can still be acquired with the same frequency, but are not acquired as an exotic cash from the mission completion reward. Now for some of the skills, here's the chem launcher. Uh, appears they increase the repair over time strength by 11%. They lower the ammo from 3 to 2 the reinforced three game uh, plus one it's skill tier four fire starter base lowered from two to one and the same goes for the ammo for the riot foam and oxidizer and fire starter it's skill tier four you get plus one for the hive there's a lot of things if you guys want to read through some of these uh, but like for the restore hive base range increase from six meters to eight they decreased uh, or they increased the base ratio for all hive variants from 50 to 180 uh, restore Hive Charge lowered from 12 to 8 at skill tier 0. Restore Hive now gained plus 4 charges per skill tier. Restore Hive Drone Speed increased from 5% to 10% per skill tier, which is really nice. Uh, restore Hive Repair Strength increased from 120 to 140 during overcharge. Increased Range 175% to 200 during overcharge. Here's for the Stinger, which there's only a few things here for the Stinger, which is uh, Stinger Hive now gains 5% drone speed per skill. It now gains 80% drone speed during overcharge. Here's the Reviver. Uh, lowered from 4 to 1 at skill tier 0. Base cooldown lowered from 240 seconds to 180, which is really nice from the base because this thing took absolutely forever to get back. Restore Hive now gains plus 1 charge per skill tier. And here's some other things to booster if you guys want to read through these. Um, this is one I was, actually did hear about. Booster Hive effect now increases hazard protection in addition to weapon handling and melee damage. Uh, Booster Hive no longer increases weapon damage. Uh, so they, I guess they flipped that with melee damage and weapon handling. Booster Hive now gains plus four charges per skill tier. Uh, now for here's the Hive. Um, Booster Hive lives through here as well. And the Artifice, if you guys are curious about that, uh, we'll read a few of them. 100% range during overcharge, which is really nice, and 150% skill haste during overcharge, which is really nice. Um, next is going to be the shock trap. There's only a few things. They changed the cooldown from 50 seconds to 60 for the base, and the duration from 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Now, the PvP modifiers, they did increase the assault rifle damage by 9%. They increased the striker drone by 38%, and the fire starter can launcher explosion damage reduced by negative 50%, and... This is a little weird to me. I actually haven't ran that many Firestarter Kin Launchers in the DZ. So if you guys have, let me in the comment section below. But this is just a little bit of a surprise because I have not ran in this at all. I've been running into mostly, you know, stuff like Riot Foam and Seeker Mines. But not the Firestarter Kin Launcher. I don't know why I haven't, but uh, I guess this was a problem. Deployable uh, or deployed player skills now take four times more damage from hostile players. Uh, here's some of the bug fixes if you guys want to read through some of these. Um, 
fix an issue where only one of Lieutenant Gray's bodyguards would deploy their shields on Operation Iron Horse. Um, let's see. Fix an issue where players could spawn inside, spawn closest to Operation Iron Horse. So I'm not sure if that's where it could spawn inside, spawn closest to... Okay. Um, fix missing item for the Thermite Outfit and Game Rewards menu. Uh, there was a few other things in here we're looking for, that I was looking for for the high, uh, not the high, the raid. But it seems I cannot find it. Uh, but there's a bunch of bug fixes if you guys want to read through some of these. Um, missing lead timer. Uh, fixed missing leaderboards and base of operations in Haven. So that's been fixed. Now you guys can actually see where you're at in the leaderboards if you're curious. I know that's been a problem for a few weeks now. And here's some of the uh, fixing issue where some brands raid other gear since crash materials were not shared even if the materials sharing perk was purchased. So they had to fix all appears to be the newer stuff and the, one of the older, you know, striker and system corruption. But like it was like Ironworks and Walker Harris were not going to other characters. But overall, if you guys want to read through these, I will scroll up through them again. Uh, but most of these I went through if you guys want to see them again real quick. You can pause the video. Um, but overall, there's not a lot of patch notes covering, you know, this is mostly on skills and stuff and some of the loot changes, like the Hive and the Kim Launcher and stuff like that. A lot for the Hive. I mean, that's, have to list there, and a bunch of bug fixes. So that appears that's mostly what's in this patch notes. Uh, but I want to make a quick little video on it because I know some of you guys were actually asking me about this. Uh, originally, I was going to do this because usually I just post a link to the patch notes uh, lately, some of the stuff that's been, you know, put out there. I did cover some of the PTS, but for normal patch notes, I usually just... Uh, tell people to go on the forums for Ubisoft, and they're usually right there. Uh, but I will start, you know, making more videos like this and some of the patch notes, so you guys can just see them right here, and you don't have to click on any links uh, or links, and you guys don't have to uh, go to the stuff on your computer, and you can just go on your phone and video and pause it, uh, whatever you want to see. But thank you guys all for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more Division Two content, and I'll catch you guys.